Hello and welcome to this video series on video marketing. Now in this first video I'd like to introduce you to a free video recorder or probably more accurate description is a screen capture recorder but in either case it's free. Now you might be familiar with the name Cam Studio. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Now there's others on the market right now again that are free um, but I'm dedicating this video to Cam Studio and I'm making the video so that's what we're going to be watching and it's pretty popular too I mean it's been around for a while and it's got a lot of bells and whistles well, let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick now right here is camstudio.org that's the address where we're at now you know this one here is version 2.0 I believe which came out in about early 2000-ish 2003 something like that but what we're going to be using this video on is 2.5 and that's right here and just click here and that brings us to the official blog actually I've already got that one to open right here and again this is official blog I mean there's a lot of good inf information here uh, what we're gonna be doing here is going here and this is where we will be downloading the um, zip file that contains our 2.5 version now then there's a, another video right below this that the author has made on basically what I'm going to be showing you. And there's additional information here on what's updated in this particular uh, recorder versus the 2.0. A lot of cool stuff that's in here. That's why we're going to be using the 2.5 versus 2.0. Anyway, let's head on over to the download site. That's what it looks like here. And that's whenever we click on this link right here. Brings us to this page here and the only one we're interested in is right here it's 1.2 megs uh, the date was 6 September 2007 you know if you're trying to figure out which one it is well it's one that says 2.5 b1.bin not the source now if you're into playing around with source codes this is the one you want to get as well but download this uh, to your desktop wherever I've already done so so I'm gonna go ahead and open that up now and here's the zip file I've already taken the liberty of unzipping it as you can see and these are all the goodies that we get now then you can right click and put a shortcut of this on your desktop you got your player executable here you got your producer your uh, play plus not really sure what that is but who knows Maybe we'll find that out later but double click on this here we are and just kind of a quick rundown here uh, this toggles the functions that we are viewing now just click on that boom they go away click on that those go away so if you get limited desk space this might be an idea if you want to just leave this open on your desktop that's what you could do and under file oh, by the way red is record this is pause and this is stop and this I'm not sure let's push it oh okay <laughs> these are the screen annotations and uh, what we'll do here, for example, if while you're recording, you want to highlight something by pointing at it, well, we've got these guys here. For example, um, we're going to point left, and this pops up. Now, this is editable. I think that's a word. You right-click on this, and you can edit the text just by typing in here. You can choose the font, whatever's on your system. Yeah. Right in here, you know, the size of your text, the... Uh, font style, color, you want to underline it, strike up, all kinds of good stuff. But that's the text and if you've got it, which we did not download or I didn't, you might even be able to change it to Russian too or you know Japanese or whatever language you might have. Uh, but we're sticking with English for the time being. Now one cool thing that you can do is if you've got an idea as to the makeup of your video and it, it's always helpful to rather than fly by the seat of your pants like I do so many times to have a structure to your video especially if you're making some kind of a tutorial then you might go ahead and oh, bring out a few more of these here um, call outs if you will and what we can do let's say we've got these three call outs we've edited the text maybe even changed the color and oh and by the way you can also make them where they're kind of see-through or transparent let me show you that too. I believe you right click, yeah, edit transparent, you can edit the image, and you can resize it. For example, you can do this just by the sliders and so on. And the transparency, I'll show you that real quick. You can make it, come on. Oh, gotta take that first. <laughs> As you can see, all the way through it or solid. 
or very almost invisible. Okay. Now we got these three here. What we can do is we can um, right here in the layout, go to right click. Now if we click on save, then that's going to put this. Maybe we made our changes, you know, you personalize this, you made the right size, right transparency, and you like that for maybe future videos. Well, you right click and you click on save, not save layout, but save, and it puts it in here, down at the bottom. For example, click save, boom, label five. Now you can right click on this label five, and you can, um, where's it at here? You can edit shape name, yeah, right here. Then you can uh, personalize this label, if you will, for, again, a reminder of when you're making your video in the future, transparent yellow call out, lower right, you know, however you want to name it. Anyway, that's how you can label that. Oh, and um, go back to layout. This particular layout, we want to right click, save layout, and it puts it in here. I'm going to right click. And close all three of these. Remember, remember all three of those. We've we personalized them. We've made them the way we, we like them. Double click on this, and it brings them all three right back. Now, then, if you've got say several sections of your video, your tutorial that requires this, and maybe a, a few other callouts that are different than these that you've also personalized, well, you save those as a layout as well, and close these out here. And then you can you open up this layout here, and then next layout, and then next layout, and so on. Anyway, that's the annotations. Just want to touch on that real quick. Kind of almost forgot what they were, but anyway, that's these guys here, and this here toggles between AVI and SWF. Record SWF, record AVI. Now, SWF is kind of the thing that's ready to go on your website. AVI is a little bit bigger in file size, and it's also the, if you want to look at it like that, it's the source code for the file. It's one that can be altered uh, or, or changed. You know, like if you're going to be doing some branding of sorts and you want to add a title clip, well, this is what you'd be doing with, uh, with that. Anyway, okay, so then we've got your file, record, stop, pause, or exit. Got your region where you can, you know, what part of the screen you're going to be recording on. Region here is where you will determine that section. Let me go ahead and show you that. See the little pointer thingy here? You just hold your left mouse button down and mark a section. Let go, and it's recording. You can see the little blinky things here. <laughs> That's the recording area inside of there. Now, to stop that, you've got a couple of ways. You can either click this, which is what I'm going to do, and then it asks you where do you want to save it and how do you name it. You can see here it's automatically defaulted it to AVI versus the SWF. I'm not going to save it. But um, under region, we can also do fixed region. And you can label the screen height and all that kind of stuff. By the way, 320 by 240 is the typical, or 640 by 480 is the typical measurements for YouTube, for your information. We'll go into that in a later video in this series, too. Um, and then, of course, the window, whatever window you are in. And then full screen, pretty self-explanatory. Options, we're only going to touch on a couple of these here, but... The main ones are video options and audio options. Um, video options is where you can determine what format, or not so much format, but what uh, settings you will be needing or using to get the best output, to get the best quality video for your particular needs. Now, unfortunately, there's only about a bazillion of them out there. Depending upon what um, Kodak you use, and you can get a lot of these for free. Some of these are pretty pricey. Some of them, you know, come with this particular program. And there was one in there on the uh, page. Let me see if I can find it again. Back here on the original, camstudio.org. Again, this is for uh, 2.0, but there's a lossless codec down here, right here. If you want to just mess with the 2.0 first, get your feet wet, then here's your download here, and go ahead and get this studio, our uh, Camp Studio codec. It's the lossless codec. Anyway, it, it's it's pretty good uh, for the Camp Studio stuff. 
but here's that lossless codec I was just talking about. The Div X six. This is the latest one as of the making of this video. This one's pretty good too. Uh, this one's pretty good. Uh, but usually the one that comes with this out of the box is the Microsoft Video One. Best for Microsoft Video One, yeah, for me anyway, is to have this cat here right at about 80, the slider bar here. You see the number here. Put that at about 80, thereabouts. And then the key frames, or I'm sorry, the set key frames every however many frames. We're going to go with 150. And the capture frames every 66 milliseconds. And then the playback rate, we're going to stick that at 15 frames per second. And, of course, if you don't want to mess with any of this, then you might want to just try the auto adjust. And don't worry about a thing. Everything will work out great. Pick whatever codec you want. Auto adjust. Bada bing, bada boom. It'll do it. Uh, I've found that, however, it doesn't always work that way. So I, I try to just do this stuff manually. You know, I kind of, I can blame myself and if things don't work out right. Uh, but that's just me. Okay, another one while I've got you here. And I have your undivided attention. We're going to do the XVID MPEG-4 codec. This is also a good one. And what we're going to do here, pretty simple, just go to configure. Don't worry about any of those other things. Make sure that this is set, and you've got these drop-down arrows here. Make this is set for the L5. Okay. And this one's set for the single pass, the encoding type. And then this is set for 4.00. I'm not really sure about the mores or the calculating. Just slide this here, or you can just type in 4.00. Zero, zero. Make sure it looks like that and all will be right with the world as far as using the XVID MPEG-4 codec. And one more, the one that I like the best actually that I use on most all of mine is the DivX, again this is the latest one, the 6.8.3 and we want to, on this one, I'm going to go to 60 on the slider bar here and then this one we're going to go with 30. This one we're going to go with 50, and this one we're going to go with 20. And, of course, I have all these numbers committed to memory. I'm not reading anything off. And then we want to click on OK. Oh, one other thing, too. Let's go back here. Um, video options. On this one here, under Configure, one thing I want to make sure that we've got done right is the one pass. The only thing on all these here to mess with, one pass, 256 KBPS. Everything else, leave it alone, unless, of course, you want to buy the pro version. The one that I'm showing here is the free version. Anyway, that's pretty much it on those. And under, what else we got? Options, cursor options. Basically, you know, pretty self-explanatory. You can highlight the cursor, put this guy in there. You can adjust the size of it. You can have circles or squares or ellipses. You can even change the color if you want. Okay, that's too foo-foo for me. And we got green. Um, oh, what else we got here? Show, or you can even just hide the cursor too. And you got your custom cursor where you can go in here and find one. Um, oh, all kinds of good stuff here. And that's that. What else we got here under options? Do not record audio. Guess what that means. And we want to record audio from the microphone. That's what I'm doing now. Audio options. Similar to the video options, we have audio codecs. Usually, depending upon what you have, I've got a sound card. Um, I've got the uh, Logitech headset with the microphone attached to it. That's what I'm using now. So I'm going to use that. And here, the uh, recording format, again, we've got like with the video, you've got a lot of different uh, settings you can play with here. I'll cover these in more detail later on. Click on OK. And interleave, that's fine. Everything else is pretty well fine right here. Now then, volume. Okay, bring this down here. You want to make sure that this is unticked, the mute, because guess what? If this is ticked, you're not going to make any sounds anywhere. And you might want to raise this up a little bit too. Again, that's totally up to you. And all these are, are negotiable items. I mean, you can always play around with them, and you should do just fine. 
And what else we got here under options? Oh, yeah, enable auto pan. Now, that's one other thing I'm going to be going over in this video as well is the auto pan and auto pan speed and the zoom. But enable auto pan, that now is ticked. So as you move your mouse, it should also be moving. But of course, we're not recording anything now. Auto pan speed. Usually about 80 or 70 or so is about right. Again, that's something that can be played around with. But if it's not ticked, then, you know, it's not going to matter how, how fast you got to set it. So take this, play with it. If you don't like it, then undo it. Program options. One thing that I would mess with on here, really I wouldn't mess with any of them, except for these two. Make sure these two are ticked. Save settings on exit. Otherwise, you're going to go through all of this each and every time. Capture, translucent, layer. Whatever that means, we're not positive, but I'd leave it checked. Play EVI files from recording stops or do not. I'd leave it where it is, really, just, you know, as it is. And let me see here. It's fine. User specified directory. I would go with this one here. That way, unless you know exactly where your temporary directory is, I would just go with here and choose, put a folder on the desktop, which I've kind of done, and that's called my throwaway stuff, Cam Studio Tester. Now then, every time we finish the recording here, it's automatically going to go right there on my desktop, throwaway folder, Cam Studio Tester. And record to flash options, if you wish. Check those out. Again, items to be played around with, folks. Keyboard shortcuts. These are pretty cool. And just as it says, these are ways to shortcut. You don't have to hit the play or the record. Do your F10, F9, whatever, F11, and you can adjust these to your heart's desire. And these are on the layouts, too, on the annotations I was showing you earlier. The record pause key. And then the language. Well, we're, again, we're sticking with the English here. And then we got the screen annotations. And then under effects, we've got annotation. Um, we got some watermarks. These are some of the items that we were not able to, that we did not have, or we have that we did not have on the 2.0 version, but we do have here. Again, a watermark is something that you just add at the um, some at some point on your video that identifies it as probably yours a caption again similar to, to a watermark although a caption is a something that uh, is on a section or a portion of your video pointing something out kind of like those annotations uh, whereas a watermark is typically something that's kind of in the bottom corner here with your URL or your domain name that is somewhat transparent, but it still can be seen, but it's on throughout the entire video. At least ways that's the way I look at the watermark. And the timestamp, yeah, again, maybe put that on there if you're going to do that um, in, the, in an area of your video that's not in the way. So it's not messing things up. What do we got here under options? Oh, okay, under options. This is where we go to set up our timestamp, our caption, and the watermark. And under the watermark, you should already have an image created. Like if you got your URL, you can make one in Paint, or if you got Photoshop, or but anyway, under options, you can choose where on your screen you want it to show. I would go with bottom corner, bottom left, bottom right, and uh, caption. Again, you've got the ability here to change the font, the color, the background color, and the location on your screen. And the timestamp, again, same thing, font, text, and I mean the colors and the background color and the location on the screen where you want your timestamp to be. And that's pretty much it, folks. And this here is basically just this here. Same as the toggle view here. And then the help, well, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory too. And just click on the about, gives you the version. And that's the case with any software. You click on help, about, and it'll give you the version. There, a little added extra for you. But that's pretty much the Cam Studio. One thing I wanted to point out real quick too is the magnifying. We touched on the auto pan and how we enabled that. But the magnifying, there is no such thing as the Zoom for Cam Studio just yet. But there is a third party software that will work while you are recording. And that is called magnifying glass. And there's, uh, and this here's the URL for it under workerscollection.com. Let me just go there and see what we got. I think that's good enough. Correct. 
So if we do just workerscollection.com, then it will bring us to this page, okay? And then you can go over here and do the magnifying glass free. And once you've downloaded that, what that does is it allows you to, well, let me just show you real quick because I've already downloaded it. And these are the items that you get after you unzip the download. The only thing that I'm really concerned with right now, I mean, if you read Rush and you can check this one out, otherwise you read this one here, but is this guy here, the exe file. And what I always do is I always scan it first for viruses by right-clicking and scan with my AVG. Been there, done that. Double-click on it. And next, next, application, yep, yep, that looks good. Okay, and let's launch it. And here we go. Now then, um, one application will start up. No, so we must have the application start. Yeah, okay. English, here's our um, shortcut key, and of course you can change that to, I believe. And, and it says here, if it conflicts with something else you already got set, well then you can set it. Basic options, fully visible, uh, zoom factor, you know, you can go big time, uh, but that's fine right there. And we'll, we'll show you here in a second. Of course, you know, play around with this. Pixel size or the height, we're going to go with uh, 250 by 350 just to give you an idea as to what I'm talking about. Advanced option, no, yeah, and the offset here, for example, you see my mouse, where this is at, the actual screen, it's going to be 30 pixels off from where my mouse is. So I'll show you here in a second. Pro version to worry about, about again, tells you a little bit about it. Okay. And down here, well, you can't really see, but I'll move my whole screen down here. Right down here is in my start menu is a magnifying glass. I'm going to right click and show it. There we go. And you see my mouse is in the bottom part here. There we go. I guess it changes. <laughs> okay, so I haven't played with it too much, but you get the idea. Using this while recording your Cam Studio video will be able to, it'll be able to zoom in on a particular part of your recording or your screen. And this works ideally for uh, systems like, for example, some of the video hosting sites out there like YouTube that uh, shrink everything down. Well, this will be able to provide a good tutorial for the people, for your viewers, even after another party such as YouTube or Google Video shrinks your video down to almost nothing, you'll still be able to, or your viewers will still be able to see what you want them to with this magnifier. Control-Alt-G, turn it off. Control-Alt-G, turns it on. How quickly they forget. Okay, I guess it also increased the size. But control alt. I'm not sure what it was doing there. Now let me move my video thingy back up here where we were. But that's the magnifier. And again, that's the location at triple w workerscollection.com and it'll bring you all the way over to here. And that's pretty much it, folks. Um, quick introduction, well, twenty or thirty minutes into an introduction anyway, of the free Cam Studio Screen Recorder 2.5 is the version. Hope you learned something here today and get out there and start recording some tutorials, some videos, some screen captures because what you're wanting to do with this video series is to bring in a boatload of free traffic to your site or to the product that you're promoting through your affiliates uh, or through the affiliate program you belong to. So create a quick program or, or quicker program than this one anyway, on uh, your product or your website and start to promote it. And with this you can put in the watermarks and we're going to go into in later videos some of the branding and some a whole bunch of other cool stuff. So stick around. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed this video too. Thank you much for watching.